Welcome to episode 3 of CNC Router Beginner 2 Pro. The topic of today's video is work holding. Rather complex and long, uh, so there will be a lot of me just talking and showing you things and it's going to be jam-packed with information, so let's get right to it. The easiest method of work holding is to use double-sided tape and I use two different types. Um, this one here is made by 3M, it's called VHB tape and it has a little bit of thickness to it and the advantage of that is that it can bridge uh, somewhat of a gap if the parts don't fit very well together. There's also one called X-Tape for woodworking and that is also great, it's a double-sided tape that's a little bit thinner and both of these will uh, work to fasten your work piece down directly onto the spoil board. Now the difference of those two types of tapes is that the foam layer in between uh, if you lose really big tools or um, start to machining aluminum, the problem is going to be that there is some gif in that foam. So it's not quite as rigid uh, of a fastening method. And the thinner tape doesn't do that, but therefore it cannot bridge a gap. Now, that is where the painter's tape and CA method comes in. So the advantage of painter's tape and CA is that you have the tape on either side, so your workpiece and the table, but then if there would be, the fit would be like, the part that's bowed, what I'm saying, is then the CA, a medium CA, can bridge the gap in between the two surfaces. And that works really well, and there is no give in it, and sometimes if you use too much of it, the problem will be that you can't get it back off. I think one of the most questions I get asked on my channel is, hey, what type of CA are you using? And I can tell you that CA is actually not so important because it never lets go. Even the really cheap stuff that like comes in a like two gram package or something from Harbor Freight, even that doesn't let go. But the tape will, especially if your part is a little bit smaller. So I don't use the blue standard blue painter's tape. I use this one here from Scotch and um, it's called Scotch Heavy Duty. And I also use the green one. The green is actually for uh, rough surfaces. Both of those work really well. And there's one more trick I'd like to show you. You do need to roll that painter's tape down. It does make a really big difference to use a roller or you could also use um, um, like a card, like a credit card type and uh, squeegee that tape down. So it's called pressure sensitive adhesive for a reason. So rolling it down will make a good contact to your working surface. When it comes to the CA, my first choice is the Starbond Medium Black CA. The reason for that is that it stays good for a long period of time. I think this one here is probably a year old or so and it's still liquid in the bottle. You know sometimes the CA goes bad. Also what I like about it is because it's black I can see it really good on the tape itself so I know how much I have on it. And um, the next one is that they send you normally another cap. So even if the cap goes um, clogged or something like that, uh, you can replace the cap and still keep using the material. And my second go-to is simply use medium Gorilla Glue. The reason I like this one is because I never have to fumble with the can or the cap. So if I, when I open it, it's ready to go. I never have to poke anything in there or this or that. It's, it's just, you take it, open it, ready to go. Put a date on the side when you, when you bought it and keep it cool. Um, I think you can expect maybe yeah, half a year or so uh, shelf life out of this. You also will need an uh, accelerator and that is sort of a little bit of a personal choice. Now I like how this one here sprays that is NCF quick. Um, because it doesn't make the surface so wet. It just makes a fine mist. Unfortunately, I don't like the smell of it. So it just stings up my shop and for some reason the smell, I hate that. So I use 2P10 most of the time. The 2P10 comes in a really large can and it will last a long time. It does make the surface a bit more wet, I think, because it just doesn't, um, the aerosol can doesn't, 
evaporate, not evaporate, the aerosol can doesn't um, atomize C particles as good, I'd say. Now this is a pump sprayer of Accelerator. I cannot recommend that for this application just because it stays way too wet. So when we made the spoil board, I did not really give you any hints or any suggestions for clamping the material down. And uh, besides the tape, you can use clamps, of course, on the side of the project. And I have one right here. It's uh, from Rockler and it's an aluminum one. And uh, here's another one, a larger version of this. And on either one of them, you might be able to catch that I machined into them. So that unfortunately will happen. And it might be that you break your bit at that time. So uh, I think these are okay. I don't think, I don't know if I would buy them again or not, but um, there is one better than this that I like better. Let me get that. It's this one, it's made by Inca, but I like the style better. So if you have a T-Track uh, table, you can use a rod or this is basically a bolt that would engage into the T-Track. But the feature is that um, it can actually change its angle and I like that a lot. So um, I would prefer this style of clamp. Now. If you have a clamp on the side of your project, you can already see what happens here. It will always stand up quite a high amount over your project and over your cut. So you always have to make sure that you set your save Z or your save distance or the retract distance um, from your bit high enough so that you don't run into these guys. But you can also make your own. So here I have one. This is made of Delrine or POM and um, I like these a lot and I have to tell you that this is what I mainly use now and also this guy got a bit <laughs> uh, bite taken out and also this one and in either one of those cases the bit survived nothing happened and um, if you make this out of, of out of palm they are really uh, stable so they don't bend and I cannot recommend you make them out of MDF or plywood because the MDF just has no strength and the plywood usually breaks right along the inside ply layer where they're glued together. To make this a tool-free setup, I simply made those star knobs with the shape of a hex in them and then pressed in a quarter 20 bolt like so. And then I normally put a washer under it and then put that down like this and now maybe a piece in the back for support like so and your work piece would be here you clamp this down it's actually a really nice setup and it's not as tall as the commercially available clamp so to use this bolt into your spoil board you will need a threaded insert that is what i have right here so the threaded insert um, gets put into the spoil board that's where it's going to live and then you sink it down a little bit below the surface and these are made out of zinc so i have machined into these several times and actually the bit never broke so that is another advantage of using these so really really simple is also to just use a wooden screw so a wood screw basically and a piece of leftover material this here is hdpe cannot really recommend that i think hdpe is too soft but you know, in a pinch or for a small piece where you directly go next to the workpiece, it might work. Now I like these uh, screws with a flat head and the square uh, drive. Um, I think these are the crack screws. Um, they're good. I think they're good to use. So next up is a toe clamp. So what you will have is ultimately a stop block like this that gets set onto your spoil board. So the stop block looks like this. Um, so you can see you set that down and then ultimately you have a toe clamp. So the toe clamp is put into your spoil board and there's a lever action right here. And that lever action ultimately allows for the front piece to go forward and backward. So, so the toe clamp actually has a little bit of a disadvantage or can be a problem. If you set the clamp right here and it's a smaller stable piece, I think that is a good setup. If you have larger pieces, however, and you really crank them down on the side, what can happen is that the whole piece starts to bow.
So uh, because you clamp the sides only and not from the top, um, that side pressure can bow your piece up. So always watch out for that. So when you start looking at machining metal, you will need a vise or some other form of holding the material down. Actually the super glue and tape method works really well for holding aluminum plates down. I use that quite frequently. But if I have to make um, parts where I also have to index or um, steel parts, I like to use a vise on the table. Now the drawback for this guy here is that it's relatively tall. So if your z-axis or you don't have a lot of z-clearance, then this one becomes quickly an obstacle where your parts don't fit anymore on your machine. But then when that happens, you can use a fixture plate like this. So the fixture plate itself and the vise that I have on here allow you a whole lot of different styles of clamping and also indexing. So indexing your workpiece so that it sits in the same position every time you make the next part. So if you have to make 10, 20 or something like that, that comes in really handy. So let's talk about indexing your workpiece onto your table. Um, by indexing, I mean that you place it on to a known location. X, Y is zeroed out and basically when you're done, take your part off, put the next part on and you are ready to go. And you can do that with several different methods. An easy one is to just make a grid pattern onto your spoil board. So you can use a V-bit, uh, preferably one with a steep angle, like a 20 degree, 22 degree or so, a 30 degree and you put a grid pattern down and that grid pattern helps you to align your part. Next is to make a stop in the X and Y direction. I think that is a really good solution uh, for woodworking because it also could provide you a corner already that you clamp against. If you do a lot of large plate work, like say, you know, 4x4 or 4x8 sheets, then one of the solutions that I see a lot of businesses are using is the composite nail. So you have a nail gun like this, and instead of a metal nail, it shoots a composite nail. And that is actually a super good method and it's fast to put your material down. And the nice thing is you can just tap them with a hammer from the side, so the material, and they shear right off. So it's relatively easy to get your project back off the table. Last, I like to talk about vacuum. The vacuum table is great if you have thinner material that is large and you know when, both, when you have both material then vacuum will pull the entire plate down and that is actually a really big advantage. Smaller projects become more difficult because the vacuum will just not provide enough holding or clamping power anymore and if you use bigger tools chances are your material is going to shift around on the table. If you like to clamp larger material down you will need a vacuum pump that actually is a monster. So I'm talking about five horsepower and up motor on there, or five kilowatt and up motor that will run usually not in a household shop. Next is that the surface that you're clamping down to needs to be really clean, actually on both sides. So it's not as simple as taking one off and putting the next one on, especially if you start machining metals and want to hold those down. It, everything needs to be like super clean. You cannot have any chips in between those two surfaces that get sucked to each other. Let's improve the spoil board we made in the last video by laying down a grid pattern and I'd like to show you how I did that. In VCAF Pro I simply draw a line horizontally and then I use the array copy. 17 copies in, in one column um, gives me the results that I need. And then I make a line tool again and I know I want the vertical lines in between the two holes that are uh, on the plate itself. So I'm just going to make a line on the bottom and on the top. And then use the line command again. And it will snap automatically in the center of the line that I just drew. So now connect the bottom and top center. And that will give us a vertical line. Now let's copy that line. So we highlight it. Array copy. We need now one row, eight columns, hit the copy line and done. Left to do is now to delete the small lines um, that we need as a help basically um, to draw the vertical line. The trick for the tool pass is to use a 2D profile tool pass. We only have lines, it's not a closed vector. And the cut depths we want to be at one millimeter. 
The tool I have selected here is a 60 degree V-bit, but that actually doesn't matter even so I use a 20 degree because the cut depth will be one millimeter. That will be it. The trick is you have the selection outside, inside and on. We want to be on the vector and we can now simulate the tool pass and you can see it is just carving out those lines. Now they might not be in sequence and if you don't like that then you can just cut all of the horizontal lines first and then all of the vertical lines if you like. This is the 22 degree V-bit, it's a quarter inch shank. It's very very sharp and comes to a very fine point. It will make for a crisp line and as a starting point I think that you can use 800 or 0.8 meters per minute as a feed rate and 20,000 rpm. The diameter is virtually nil the cutting diameter so we need a high rpm and here you can see how crisp those lines came out and that will make it really easy for you to align your project and clamp it down. If I can find links to the products that I used today I will leave them in the description below. As a beginner I hope you got some information out of this. In the next episode I am going to show you some tools that I use to get clean cuts on plywood like on this Baltic birch. Okay till then take care bye!